seven amps in the world, right? Seven amps. I'd say the Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier to me seems like the one that has uh, been most pigeonholed and potentially most uh, misunderstood, underutilised. Can you imagine, for example, turning up to a pop gig with a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier or, you know, a jazz gig or any of these kind of things, a country gig? To me, it seems like that tread plate design that we probably all know from the 90s into the 2000s almost always was paired with a load of distortion and maybe even a PRS guitar, right? In an alternative universe where they didn't put that tread plate on it, potentially the dual rectifier might have had a different kind of life, right? The story of the dual rectifier it starts in about 1992 when it was released to the unwitting public. But I think you can't really do the history of the dual rectifier without mentioning that Mike Soldano in 1987 kind of designed the basis for this kind of circuit, right? Now you could look into that for yourself. I think there are people out there that have drawn the similarities between these designs. Also PV with the 5150, that came out shortly after the Soldano Slow 100. The Soldano Slow was also played by the likes of Landau, Lukather, Knopfler even, uh, and Clapton, who is uh, a racist apparently. Anyway, so, first of all, the kind of tones that I think you're probably used to hearing from the dual rectifier, you won't be hearing any pedals in this demo by the way, but you will hear this kind of thing, which uh, is probably what you think of when you think of a dual rectifier, right? These kind of... sort of thing where you can get oodles of gain 
Um, you know, this is not a crazy volume. Um, but yeah, that's with the gain at about five and a half. <laughs> on the red channel you know and if we start so that's with the treble all the way off and stuff kind of dialing in the sort of thing that to me stays smoothish but it's got this really ability to be quite biting <laughs> Uh, you know, you can hear the pickup changes and differences. There's kind of fuzz tones in a rectifier as well, like it's not this all out kind of chainsaw -y tone, there are these kind of fuzz qualities, particularly if you drop the mids out and drop the treble, you can get this kind of tone, which I think is really interesting for an amp to be able to do this. <laughs> in the circuit you can dial in these crazy kind of tones that aren't possible with normal valve amps but the other side of these things like you get these clean tones which are totally useful if a little cold maybe compared to King, so it's a bit more versatile than your average rectifier, maybe. think of that's got pigeonholed into this kind of rock metal thing more than a dual rectifier because for me I can't really think of too many artists that use these now Alan Holdsworth used dual rectifiers for quite a bit of his career I do know that I can't think of too many like other types of music though where they gave a dual rectifier a good run out like Foo Fighters Dave Grohl um, he used one for a good time, right? Tom DeLong from Blink-182, the boys from Busted. Um, you know, there's loads of this kind of rock metal stuff where you see a dual rectifier being used. Not so much lately either. I think there are amps out now that can do a bit of a tighter thing and the, the more loose, buzzy, um, flabby style of distortion from a rectifier is not necessarily what people are going for as much these days. I don't know how much of that you can dial back on the amp itself, but you certainly people tend to use a tube screamer into it, right? And you...
gain back. set of jobs than a dual rectifier. I feel like it's a tool which is a little bit more versatile than it gets credit for. Maybe. Let me know your thoughts on the dual rectifier as an amp in general. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Um, I feel like it could be a bit of a Marmite thing but also there's more to this than meets the eye. Certainly this is a Road King so you've got all of the um, tube switching things if you want. At the moment I'm running an EL34 6L6 mode um, you've got more switches on the back of this thing than, than people at a jazz concert. Although most amps have more switches than that, don't they? <laughs> showed you the amount of gain that you've got on this thing uh, it's pretty insane um, <laughs> the road king probably be selling that by the way <laughs> cheers <laughs> 